Hi and welcome to uh, another Monday. Starting dull, hopefully getting brighter, we'll see. Hope everybody's well and had a nice weekend. Um, plenty of stuff going on on the site. Uh, some nice uh, interesting queries coming in as well, which keeps me busy. Um, and we'll see how we get on. Um, oh, we've got, a, we've, got, uh, we've got the grey background for this one. Sometimes we have uh, uh, the background open. It depends. Depends how we're feeling, I suppose. I hope you can cope with that. It's probably easier in a way. Um, so what's going on? We are finishing the topic of thinking defence today. So that's the end of the month. Thinking defence will have finished. And then next month we are talking about everything to do with preempting, everything to do with preempting next month, and then believe me, there's a lot to think about. So it's a long seminar, um, but uh, hopefully not too in depth, as it were, but but a long seminar to enjoy. And then we'll be talking on each of the Mondays about it. Uh, just a warning, of course, don't forget next Monday we are not live. So next Monday. We are not live. That is a bank holiday Monday, so the end of the summer. Yes, we have uh, um, uh, we have had a summer, uh, supposedly. So the end of the summer ho bank holiday there on next Monday. Okay, but we're we're live as usual on the Wednesdays and Fridays, etc. Um, but there's no no bank holiday Monday broadcast. So. Um, Yes, so we're talking about preempt next year. I think that should be quite fun. Um, not next year, next month, the whole of the month. And I want you to send in hands, please. Uh, successes and and disasters. Um, uh, my, my, my philosophy is always simple with these kind of things. And you'll find that in the big seminar that I talk, that if you don't get a minus 800 at least once or once every month or two, you're not bidding enough. So you should have bad scores. You should get bad scores, as it were, but hopefully they're outweighed by a long distance by the good scores. And, and as a partnership, of course, particularly, you've got to get used to the idea that if you're going to preempt more, you are going to get some bad ones. I mean, everybody, you know, not so much misjudges, we, we just take a gamble in a way. I mean, let's be honest, you'll have seen me in, in the team's matches doing a number of things where really, um, I have a feeling that the members of the team who play against me just don't double me as much as they should because they, they don't know what I'll do to them if they do. But there's certainly been times where I could have been doubled and gone for a fair few. And I have been doubled on, a, on occasions and gone for a fair few, but I'm happy to do that for the payback. Anyway, we're going to focus on defence again today. On the Fridays, we're going to have some fun. We, uh, we've just started the topic of supporting majors. Supporting majors. So we were discussing the, the, the full system last Friday, and now we are going to and now we are going to be looking at Jacoby, the Jacoby 2 no trump response to a major. Okay, the bidding quiz we'll have will be on that kind of theme as well. Okay, so yes, so the Jacoby 2 no trumps we're going to look at. So that is part two. And that is the special offer this week. So anybody who's non-member, if you do want to watch, you can get the chance to watch that Friday at half price at three pounds. So do tune in if you wish. Remember, you just go to the special offers in the shop. Um, and uh, so the, 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 the Bernard McGee Bridge shop. And you can see that, nearly called it the Mr. Bridge shop. There, there you go, that was a, a Freudian, Freudian slip or whatever. Um, and I would love to have your feedback on Live Bridge. Thank you so much for those of you who've sent it in already. So quite a few clubs are trying it. It's obviously cagey, but it's interesting to see. I mentioned last Friday and I think last Monday about the EBU doing their summer congress and they've got some pictures there of, of having successfully won that. Not, not necessarily huge numbers, but I think, you know, but without, without the masks, but with precautions. And I think uh, that's what most of us are hoping for. And I think a lot of clubs are just gradually waiting for, I think, maybe autumn to come and that's when we might take it up. But it's interesting and hopefully then we can have a nice balance between uh, bridge and uh, maybe some some internet bridge but also some club bridge I mean we're running our basic games so we've got two 16 board games on Monday and Thursday and two eight board games 
Uh, I like the idea of the eight board games. They haven't caught on quite. Remember, well, these are for the members. Haven't quite caught on yet, but we'll see how they do. Uh, and uh, because I think eight boards online is quite a nice thing. And last but not least, don't forget Begin Bridge. Um, I would like some feedback on that. So we've put the Begin Bridge on the members site now. Um, and don't forget that any beginner who, who does fancy it, it's beginners and novices really, uh, can have a go for a month free of charge. Uh, and see how they find it. Uh, and I'm going to be doing each of my tips on the Mondays is going to be on part of that software. And um, so, and I'll tell you where we are in it and we'll try to make our way through it. Um, it starts with declare a player and we'll look at some of that. Okay, so um, what am I doing? I am going to show you this. No, I'm not going to show you that. There we go. So let's look at the hand evaluation hand. That's those of you on the Friday will have seen this. And um, so what I want you to do generally with these hands is first of all, give your first impressions. So you're going to be the opening bidder, for example, but, but how do you feel about the hand? Um, and so here, uh, however you feel about it, I'm pretty sure you're going to open it one spade anyway. Um, and on this occasion, we're going to be looking at how you might feel about the hand if your partner made a four club response uh, so it would go one spade four clubs from your partner and it's just how you would evaluate the hand and how you would feel about going on those of you who are not so sure four clubs would be a splinter bit showing a shortage in clubs and four card spade support with game going values we'll talk about that a little bit more when we come back to it so we'll come back to that in a moment let's go to the PowerPoint. There we go. So we're going to finish our chat about thinking defence. I hope some of you are happy about it uh, and have been using just the simple tactics. I don't, I mean, a lot of what we've been doing here in terms of the defence is simply trying to just change our habits at trick one to make sure we take a little bit more time. So remember, every single time I've done the seminar this month, I've started with the same slide. Make your high cards work. That means your ace is to kill a king, a king is to kill a queen or jack, ace to kill a queen, king, queen or jack, a queen to kill a jack, 10, nine. You want them to do work if they can. Do not waste your middle cards. Your sevens, eights and nines can really be important. Okay, so don't, don't just throw those away willy nilly. They will often win that fourth round of the suit. And understanding the defensive finesse, i.e. understanding that when you lead a low card, okay, your partner is promising, sorry, you're promising a high card, in which case your partner can bank on that. So for particularly if I, if I say I've got the ace, queen, jack of clubs, my partner leads a low one, I'm thinking this isn't a finesse. This is actually, we've got the ace, king, queen, jack between us. Whereas generally, when we've got the ace, queen, jack in our hand, we're thinking, oh, should we be capturing that king. Okay, so those are the basic fundamentals. Uh, those of you who want to practice them, those are the last four chapters of the Begin Bridge software. So for novices who are used to playing bridge, get in there and have a go at practicing those hands because that will test, um, and will hopefully improve your basic defense, okay? So take your time at trick one. Very, very simple. You are allowed to take that time. Now, I don't mean go off and make a cup of tea when you're online, etc., or when it's trick one, but you know, well, you can if you're dummy, I suppose. But look at dummy carefully, take your time, because the idea is, is you play the rest of the defense in tempo. So what we mean by that is trying to play at a, sim at a sensible pace. Okay, now, here I've got the green screen up again, um, which is used in a different way now, but you've got the green, so the Remember, the centre of the table is the middle. I've put you in the west seat for a change. You're going to be the opening bidder. And it's a different set of things we think about. So it's a slightly different mindset. Um, it's interesting. I was talking to someone about the, their, they were looking at the scores they got sitting as opening leader and non-opening leader. And they found they got better scores um, as the non-opening leader. And, the, and there was a good reason for that in the sense they were probably the better defender with the partner. And it's much easier to defend if you are in the east seat as it were the west seat's tough and we're going to see why in a moment okay so let's see how the auction progressed south opened three spades you cannot see south's hand don't forget so south opened three spades uh, i suppose 
you might dredge up a double um, but it looks with the ace of spades as your singleton um, I think passing is probably more reasonable uh, and it actually went four spades so you chose to pass a three spade opening it went four spades I don't mind if you double um, but it's um, it could get quite ugly um, but you know yeah a double doubles okay but anyway you chose to pass so it's gone three spades pass four spades okay three spades pass four spades and it's West's opening lead so it's your opening lead against four spades and obviously you've got to bear in mind you're not supposed to see dummies so let's put the opening lead down the opening lead is going to be the queen of diamonds I hope okay now what's important when you lead that queen of diamonds is that you're excited about seeing dummy now so you don't just think ah oh, great I've done my opening list lead I've got nothing to do okay what you've got to do is look at the dummy and think okay how does that fit with my hand and so what we do is we look at each suit again we go through each suit a little bit trickier now and this is why I say I'm being in the West seat is, is, is hard because I want you to imagine that South is going to lead each of the other suits so the, you can't see South but you imagine what's in his hand so generally what I do is I imagine that South does two things in each suit let's say South leads the Jack of Clubs and let's say South leads a small club let's say South leads the Queen of Hearts let's say South leads a small heart etc so I go through each of those options and make a decision whether I'm going to cover or not now so you've got the quick King of Hearts by themselves and the Queen of Clubs by themselves what you should be thinking to yourself there is well shall I or shan't I cover and I'm going to make the decision before they lead the card now of course they might not have the jack of clubs they might not have the king of hearts queen of hearts but all you're trying to do is get your head into zone there so most of the time you're probably going to play small on all of the leads and clearly on a spade I hope most of you can say the ace of spades on that one quite confidently but I'd probably play the three of hearts and the three of clubs there okay I don't mind your decision but by going through it, you get ready for it. So if the Queen of Hearts is led by South and you've decided you're going to put the King on, you put it on. More importantly, though, if you decide you're going to play low, you're ready to play low smoothly. OK, all right, you're ready to play low smoothly. The reason it's so difficult in this seat is because you've got to try and guess whether declarer has got two touching honours. Now, a competent declarer, when they lead the Queen of Hearts, should really have the Jack as well. OK all right whereas and the same in a way if they lead the jack of clubs you'd expect them to have the 10 but you know this is what's so difficult you're not sure so um yeah we're generally giving counts so the three of hearts you know if you do give count signals the reason i'm playing the three rather than the two because it might be count in clubs i've got th three of them an odd number so i'd usually just follow with the lowest one there the three there but you don't have to worry about count that's a more advanced element and if you don't need it you don't need it as a partnership so those are the first three questions i've taken a bit of time on them but to be honest that hopefully doesn't take very long at all okay that doesn't take very long at all it will do sometimes and i want you to take your time on it on that king of hearts decide now are you covering the queen or not okay all right and and once you've made the decision move on okay but you'll get your mind into gear so let's what we've said before when we were talking about particularly in no trumps we talked about switches so let's let's imagine we were going to switch because i have a feeling we're going to get the lead here at some point i have a feeling we're going to get lead at some point here as in we're going to win the ace of spades unless declarer plays in an odd way so how do you feel about a heart switch how do you feel about a club switch you know how do you uh because we're gonna if we're gonna be on lead make the make the decision now get into the habit of going through each option so that when you're playing the hand you're ready to do what you want to do okay so here i would think about the switches and generally my idea is if i'm leading if i've got dummies on my left i'm looking to lead through heft 
Okay, so dummy is on my left. I'm looking to lead through heft. And what the usual expression, of course, is lead through strength. I'm just trying to rhyme it with left. So we're using the word heft. But the key element here is we're looking to lead through beatable strength. So if you are thinking of leading a suit through dummy, you would want there to be a card in dummy that is beatable. Okay, oh, I'm stretching the language there. Okay. So how would you feel about a heart switch? How would you feel about a club switch? And hopefully you're thinking that you don't like them. Because imagine I give the two cards missing to self, it's a bit of a disaster. So if self has the queen of hearts, notice that self has bid three spades, but they've only got the queen and jack in that suit. Queen jack, Maybe they've got Queen Jack 10 to 7 spades, but you're certainly expecting a couple of high cards. Okay, and we'll see in diamonds if, and particularly if South doesn't have a diamond high card, well, then South is going to have high cards somewhere else. And so your king wants to kill South's queen, possibly, and your queen wants to kill South Jack. Now, of course, if your partner has the chance to signal it to you at some point, maybe that will help you. Okay, but without a signal, I would be a little bit loath to, to lead either of those suits. Okay. So remember, we're in suit contracts, so we do have to think about roughs. Is there a chance of roughing? Well, clearly we can't get a rough. Okay. There is a chance that there might be a diamond rough. If it turns out partner is short in diamonds, then we might have led the right suit, but then we'll find that out quite quickly. Okay. Should we stop roughs? Well, clearly, dummy isn't going to be doing much roughing there. Okay, and we can't really draw trumps anyway, we've even got the ace, so the answer is no. Dummy has no shortage other than the trump suit. Important to go through that though, because so often that's the, the weak link in, in the defences. Seeing, seeing short trumps and a shortage in dummy is such an important thing to notice when dummy comes down. Okay, so we're in four spades. I think we've done it. So we've made our way through the defence and we hopefully are well placed. And if anything is going to shock us, we're ready for that shock because we've made our way through. It's what I call getting yourself into gear. So the Queen of Diamonds has led your partner, wins the ace. And then your partner leads the King of Diamonds. Okay, so you've hit his, hit his strength and declare a rough the, the second trick. Okay, so as suspected, someone was mentioning that very often when they open a preempt, they have a short suit. Of course, South short suit turns out to be diamonds. No surprise, South leads a trump trying to draw them. You put the ace on. Dummy actually plays the king of spades there. Okay, and it's your play. So what do you do now? <clears throat> yes, and the key here, a, a good number of you are on the ball there. So the key is we've made the decision at trick one, so it's easier. Don't undo your good work. You said, I don't really want to lead a heart and I don't really want to lead a club. And that's going to force De Clara to carry on leading the suits himself. De Clara can't just... Remember, What's lovely when an opponent preempts is that they're going to make those trumps anyway. Roughing a diamond does South no good at all, does it? Because a lot of defenders think, oh, diamonds have been roughed, maybe I should lead something else. It's not so much a forcing defence. Generally, we think of forcing defences when we're trying to get them to lose control. All we're doing, uh, in a way, is we're forcing them to play other suits. Okay, so we are simply we are forcing South to rough, but he's not going to lose control. He's got plenty of trumps. However, the problem he's got, he's going to have to play other suits himself. So when he leads a club, we're ready. When he leads a heart, we are ready. OK, and we're going to see why North played the king. I have a feeling that South has Queen Jack 10 to 7 and wants to draw the trumps as soon as possible. And if he'd left the king in dummy, can you see that the next time he leads a trump, he'll have to win it in dummy. He would then need to cross back to his hand to draw the last round. So if South is hitting with the queen, jack, ten of spades, can you see he didn't need the king 
and next time he can lead the six to his queen and jack. Okay, and so that's why. And so thanks, Andy, for mentioning that. So um, in response, I should say. So that's good. Um, and so in a way, it's very simple. Not a heart, not a club. Let's lead another diamond. Okay. Um, <clears throat> Steve, suggest, uh, you can play the diamonds in a particular way and you can discuss that. Usually, um, you might even be giving a suit preference signal. You can play your ace and king in a different order to show either one because you know your partner's going to know you've got them eventually because at some point, Declare is going to off. Okay. It's a very simple hand, really. It's a very simple hand. Um, you know, Declare has opened three spades and I've given Declare the queen of hearts and the jack of clubs. Clearly, when you win the ace of spades, if you lead a club or a heart, you give Declarer the chance to run that lead. So if you if you switch to the two of hearts, Declarer can run it to the queen. If you switch to the three of clubs, Declarer can run it to the jack. Declarer might not run it to the jack, but Declarer has the chance to do that. And of course, that's their extra trick. Declarer's got nine tricks, six spades, the ace of hearts, the ace king of clubs. In Clearly, if Declare leads the Queen of Hearts, it's difficult. You should, you've got, you probably will cover them with the King here because you've got the Nine of Hearts, so it is probably going to promote something. But Declare, surely, the normal play for Declare is to lead to the Ace of Hearts and then lead back to the Queen. That is normal. It gives Declare a 50 50 chance of making an extra heart trick. Okay, so as far as I'm, I'm concerned, I would expect Declare at some point to lead to the Ace and lead back to his Queen, at which point we can put the King on and then lead another heart or lead a, another diamond, not playing clubs, although by that time. Okay, so it's important to go through the suits at the start because that will often help you. Okay, it will often help you. Um, East clearly had a choice of which way to play his diamonds. He could have played the king or the ace, and that again is up to partnerships. The usual play would probably have been to play the king first, then the ace. That would be normal. So if you do play it in the other direction, you should really be promising something. Uh, and some of you, if you really want to play advanced, that should be promising something in a higher suit or a lower suit, depending on the way you like it. And that could be really important because, of course, if you did have the Queen Jack of Hearts on this hand, you'd want your partner to switch, maybe perhaps quite quickly. OK, but that's 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 another place. OK, what we're doing here is focusing on getting our mind in gear and understanding whether we should be switching or not. It's a classic error, this hand, where the ace and king of diamonds are played on the first two tricks to clear a roughs and the defenders start thinking, OK, well, there's no point playing diamonds anymore. We need to make tricks from somewhere else. Whereas actually, often you do not need to do anything. You need to do nothing. By doing nothing on this hand is what we call passive defence. By doing nothing, you force Declarer to try and do. And if Declarer tries and do, tries to do, apologies, it's a perfectly reasonable play of Declarer. He's going to try to hope to establish a trick for his Queen of Hearts. He takes action. He plays over to his Ace of Hearts and leads a small one towards his Queen. If East has the King, his Queen makes. So he feels quite confident still in the, in the contract. OK, but if I was Declarer, my 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 hope would be that the opponents try to play those suits for me, because if they do lead those suits, I am going to make an extra trick. OK, so if they need a club or a heart, whoever has, funny enough, the high heart. OK, you can still perhaps make the extra trick if they if the defence go well. OK, so we've done a lot of talking about defence. It's. Defence in its simplest form is really difficult. If I put the word thinking before it, clearly it's uh, it's even more difficult. Um, we do it a lot of the time um, in the teams events that we play. I, you know, obviously half the time I'm defending and it's hard work for me, but but I enjoy it. Um, and we get to see a lot of things going on. Playing teams defence is so much easier because you don't have to worry about over tricks. Playing pairs. You'll have seen me struggle on the times we do pairs on those Wednesday nights because every trick counts. So you really struggle with each card. But again, dummy, 
dummy is fundamental to all defense. Learn to love seeing dummy come down. I always used to, I mean, those of you who've maybe heard me talk about this before will know I, one of my banes is, is people filling, uh, is filling out their scorecard when dummy comes down. I like using a scorecard. Now we haven't done them for a little, but I do like it because it's good practice. It gets you remembering certain things and you can write the odd thing down. But when dummy comes down, I want your focus on dummy. It's by far the most important part of the thing. So um, let's, we're going to go look at the hand valuation. Just a quick mention of the teams. Yes, we've got the prize teams coming up. The prize teams coming up on Wednesday. We've got quite a few regulars in that. I'm playing with Brian, who, who, who's uh, on the live chat quite a lot. And we've got Sue and Alan, I think, playing at the other table as well. So a nice, as well as, uh, as our other prize winners as well. So it should be fun. So do join us for that if you fancy that. Okay, no, that's the wrong thing. You didn't see that. I want to press that. You will see that at the end, the, the bidding quiz. Okay, so we looked at this hand. So if I pick this hand up, um, you can use the expression three bear aces if you like, okay? But for me, um, I love a six card spade suit. So, um, and given that I've got six spades, I'm very often going to be playing in spades and if i'm playing in a suit contract i love aces so playing in no trumps part let's say partner has a singleton pff, hands a bit ordinary but if i end up playing in spades i like this hand okay i like this hand so let's just see how the auction starts because then we're going to evaluate it further on so clearly we've got a spade opener a nice and ordinary spade opener our partner bids four clumps Okay, and uh, this is going to be part. Oops, hopefully that's going to come back. Sorry about that. I've got a lot of things running on the computer. Um, so, what uh, what's going on? Well, that's a splinter bit. Don't worry if you don't play splinters. Um, and for me, that shows a shortage in clubs, four card spade support, and the values for game. It should be eleven or more points. Okay, eleven or more points. So, uh, in, in a way, someone's using the term that the clubs are wasted. You're absolutely right, but that is good news, okay? You're wasted, your bad clubs are actually gonna be got rid of. So remember, opposite a splinter bit, if you know your partner's got a singleton, you're going well. Um, <clears throat> here, to be honest, try to imagine what your hand partner's hand is. He must have 11 high card points or more. What do you need in your partner's hand to make a slam? Remember, he's got a singleton club and, and he doesn't count any points in the club suit. So I think he, you need the king of trumps in his hand and we're gonna find that out. I am, you know, but I'm excited. For the first thing, the most important thing is I am excited about my partner's hand, okay? If you think about it, if he has three kings, we're making a slam, okay? If he has two kings, we've got a very good chance because he could have the king of spades and the king queen of hearts. We discard one. If, uh, even if he only has two kings and a queen, which he can't have, he's got to have more than that, but I suppose he could have king, queen, jack of spades. I'm still thinking, you know, I've got chances here. Imagine your partner had king to five diamonds, for example, and king, queen, jack of spades and nothing else. He should have another high card. Let's throw the jack of hearts or the queen of hearts in there. He should have at least 11 high card points for this bit. Okay, that's important. That This is why we need to have 11 high card points for a splinter because I'm picturing him with that. Someone mentioned the term 30 point pack. That's what we use that term because we've got no points wasted in clubs. I've got none, my partner's got none, or at least if he has, he doesn't count them. If he's got a Jack Singleton, that's not included in his points. So we've got 23 points out of a possible 30, which is, which is good news. But if he's got King to five diamonds and King, Queen, Jack, we may well be able to establish his diamonds and throw the heart away. Okay, so there's a lot of times, and even in the worst case scenario where I have King, Queen, Jack, a spades in partner's hand and Queen, Jack and Queen, Jack, well, We've got the chance of a couple of finesses and things like that. So I think if my partner's got the king of spades, I'm going to go for slam here. So I am probably just going to bid four no trumps. Okay, I don't need the queen of trumps here, of course, because if partner's got four, which he must have, 
Splinter promises for we don't need the Queen of Trumps. It's one of the reasons why uh, people overvalue kind of you know their their key card their, their Roman key card blackwoods because actually the, knowing about the Queen of Trumps is only ever useful really for a Grand Slam. It's only ever useful for a Grand Slam. It just confuses the issue in small slams and that's important. Okay, so I'm just going to be blackwood out here and if partner shows me one I'm going to go for it. Okay. Partner shouldn't really be splintering with a singleton ace. Um, so uh, here our partner bids five diamonds and uh, we're going to go for six spades. Okay. So partner's showing the king of trumps here. Um, and that's enough for me. We'll see what he's got. Okay, so he's got, that is a minimum hand, don't forget. So if you haven't played splinters, um, you of course won't be so used to it. Um, but this is the perfect hand for a splinter. Partner is showing a singleton in the bid suit, okay, and he is showing um, 11 high card points, four card spade support. So here, can you see that as long as you, I mean here we'll just, we'll, we'll play the hand out. Let's just play it out to make sure we're happy. But as long as trumps break here, we can actually draw them. So remember there's only three trumps out, so I can actually draw those trumps, can't I? Okay. Yeah, there's no doubt partner could have a void in clubs. Okay, so that would be a, the possibility of a grand slam, so that's fair enough. Okay, so I've drawn the trumps. There's no trumps left. I can rough the two clubs, and that's why we were saying that the clubs were fitting. So someone mentioning there was wastage in clubs. That's what you want opposite a singleton. So those two bad clubs are gorgeous because partners making two extra tricks from them. Don't forget, we're roughing in the short trump hand, so those two tricks are extra. Okay, in a way, why are they leading clubs? Because they think they've probably got a trick there. So they've led a club to gain a trick, then they've decided to switch trump. They, you could switch to lead a trump, but sometimes, the, quite often in these kind of contracts, the trump suit is where you might make the odd extra trick. So I don't mind the club lead there. Okay, and as you can see, partner's got the king, queen of hearts, and we're gonna throw the diamond there. So I hope you, I mean, I'm not gonna play the west through there. Ace, king, queen of hearts. I'm gonna just open the hand so that you can see that there's no more trumps left. But clearly, the, I, I tell you what, I'll just quickly get rid of the diamond so you can see it. There we go. And the class, the key part is, is now you can cross rough. Okay, you can cross rough. So the two clubs get roughed in dummy, and that is the beautiful thing. Okay, all right. So that's lovely. Okay, um, so that's that was that one. The evaluation. I'll just quickly claim that for twelve. And notice the power of aces here, and also notice you only have 23 high card points. 23 high card points on this particular hand. Crazy, isn't it? When a singleton fits perfectly and you've got a big fit, you can make so many tricks. And so it's a beautiful slam. This is a classic four spades plus two at most clubs. So I'd expect most players at the Bridge Club to be in four spades plus two here. Um, and then not worry about it too much because they've got an, uh, got an average score. Um, someone asking if you had four small spades in the ace of clubs singleton, would you splinter? Uh, generally, you wouldn't. You would try, I mean, unless you're a bit stronger, because you want to have the outside strength, so you would try to bid it in a different way. You'd still have a good hand, but you would try to bid it in a different way. So here, let's say you had the Queen of Diamonds and four low spades in the Ace of Clubs, you'd probably start off either, you might do a Jacoby to try and show it that way, or you would start with a bit of a suit, okay? But four clubs is a great bid on the North Hand, a beautiful descriptive bid. Okay, the reason why singleton aces are difficult to manage is because when partner's got king-queen opposite them, your partner's thinking he's got a nightmare holding. Whereas king-queen to four opposite a singleton ace can be quite valuable. Two discards can be valuable. Okay, so <clears throat> let's come back. We'll have a look at our little bit of beginners here. So uh, the beginners and all. So this is to go hand in hand with the begin software. So the begin software starts with um, starts with 
mini bridge on the first four to five chapters. Bear in mind, if you're, if you're, if you're not an absolute beginner, you certainly don't need the first two chapters. The first two chapters are telling you which order the suits are, which order the cards are, and things like that. But the next, the chapters three, four, and five give you a great chance to practice declare a play the very basics of declare a play. You're not doing any bidding on them, you're actually just announcing your points as it were, but you're then able to choose your suit as it were and have a go at practicing your basic declare a play. Okay, and so today let's have a quick look at a finesse for those uh, beginners. And so what a finesse is, is where you haven't got the ace and king of spades here, you've got the ace and queen, but you're hopeful that you can make two tricks. Okay, so what we do is we lead from one particular hand. It ha you have to lead towards your high cards. You have to lead towards your high cards. You play the queen, that's a crazy play because it might lose to the king. But of course, north might have the king. And if north has the king, he's already played. And that's what's happened here, okay? So you're playing the queen in the hope that it might make an extra trick. And the, the, the reason we're doing it is because if we play the ace first, well, then the king is definitely going to win the next trick. Okay, or a small one, if necessary. Okay, so that's the layout of the suit. Of course, when we first start playing, so there'll be some of you novices, beginners out there who still have that disease, what we call the lose trichophobia. I don't know if you know lose trichophobia, but generally beginners start with that. All of us do. We are frightened of losing tricks. So we will think about this holding and we will be too worried about losing to the king. I've just changed it there. I'm no, that doesn't happen in real life. But if I do the same here and lead small to the queen, it loses to the king. But my ace is still there. My ace will still make a trick later. Okay, so, you know, you've got to understand that. Okay, so let's look at a simple hand. Um, again, understanding uh, the finesse. So here, you in three no trumps, if you, we, we don't do bidding on those first chapters, so essentially West would have announced 16 points, East would have announced 11, and then have ended up playing the contract. And because they've got no big fit, they would play in a no-trump contract with 26 points between them, they'll play in no-trumps. Those of you wanting an auction, it would go a spade, probably two clubs actually, two no-trumps, three no-trumps. So of course, the jack of hearts led, your opponents always lead, and you count your top tricks, fundamental. Thank you for the first one coming in with the TTs there. Okay, top tricks are tricks that you make if you have lose trichophobia. So if you have lose trichophobia, imagine how many tricks you could make, i.e. you never ever risk giving the lead away. So if you never risked leading the, giving the lead away here, you'd take your ace and king of spades, your ace king queen of hearts, the ace of diamonds and the ace of clubs. So even the most pessimistic player should make seven tricks, okay? However, we need to aim for more because we've, we've opted to go for three no trumps because we've got so many points, 27 points between us, we should be able to go for game. <clears throat> not much backup in spades, not much backup in clubs, nor in hearts. Remember, you've counted the ace, king, queen, but you've got lots of high cards in diamonds, okay? So that's what we're going to aim for. So we're going to win the first trick, okay, with the queen. And then we're going to play on diamonds. And you always pursue your extra tricks first in simple bridge, okay? In simple declare play, okay? Okay? In simple declare play, you always pursue your extra tricks first. Because if you just take your top tricks, if you, if you have loose trichophobia, you only make the top tricks. We need to make two more to make three no trumps. And I'm hoping that North has the king of diamonds. So I'm just going to take a diamond finesse. Now, a lot long pause here to see if South's got it. No, okay, South hasn't, but South might have had the king of diamonds, but I've still got the ace, I'm still making the ace. I'm not worried about losing that, okay. But the jack of diamonds is win. Now I'm thinking, great news, I should finesse again. Really important this because I've seen endless beginners get this wrong. It's very tempting now to play another diamond because the jack of diamonds has just won the trick and Bernard's told me to carry on going for those extra tricks. Okay, all right. But finesses need to be led by the right player. They need to be led towards your high cards. 
So important that. So you need to cross back to the west hand. You've got a winner over there. We'll, we'll choose the spade winner. So let's lead to the king. We knew that was going to win. We'd already counted that. And let's lead another diamond. Okay, in the realm of experts, you don't know whether it's going to win, but we know it's. We're playing against novices as well, so that queen of diamonds wins as well. So you sort of know that north has the king. And that's two extra tricks. That's it. You've made your two extra tricks. Okay, you, if you, as long as you trust yourself, you counted seven at the beginning. So seven plus two, you should be able to make nine. Let's clarify that. If you look at the top there, I've shown you how many tricks you've made. You've won the first four tricks. And clearly you've got the ace of spades, the ace and king of hearts, the ace of diamonds and the ace of clubs. For those experts out there, obviously some of the suits might break kindly for you, but today they didn't and you make nine tricks. Okay, so that is the finesse in action. Look at the north hand there. North has a gorgeous diamond suit. There's nothing that north can do. As long as west leads diamonds through north. So it's the, the expression through means we lead a card. North has to play before our other hand plays. We're leading through him. Okay, if north plays the king, if north plays the king, we kill it with the ace because we are playing after north. If I move the king to the south hand, the finesse fails. It's what we call a 50-50 chance. However, what I would do is I'd put the king of diamonds in the south hand, but then move a different card over. And I would have allowed you to make the contract in a different way. But getting used to the finesse, getting used to the finesse is a fundamental to beginner's bridge. And as every single person watching these seminars will tell you, they will do a finesse on almost every single hand they play. Okay, and of course I can make them more difficult. So if I do a seminar on finessing, generally I go from the, big, from the easy to the very, very difficult indeed, because finessing happens at all sorts of levels. The most important thing is to get confident with them. Because if you get confident with them, you, you've, you, will, you will be on the way from breaking that disease, lose trichophobia. Because if you can take those finesses, everything starts to happen. Everything starts to happen. All right, so our winner of the prize is Sue Tadman. Sue Tadman, and that's the September uh, prize winners you're gonna be in. So you'll be joining us hopefully in September. I've actually got two players in September already. Um, so you'll be joining us for that. Um, I think they're in seat two and four, I'd guess. So I'm going to get one and three. So you're either playing with me or at the other table, Sue. I'm just going to, I've got the eight and the three. I think there's two people who couldn't make the August one. So I've already put them in, in September. So let's just have a look at that. Let's just draw it. I'll just close my eyes and there it is. It's the three, the three of hearts there. So Sue, you'll be on the other table from me. Um, I think that means you're against me, but as north-south at the other table. But I'll have to check because I'll fit you in. And the last winner, so that'll be next week's winner, will be playing with me. Um, okay, so don't forget, please don't forget, we're not live next week. We're not live next week. We've got the bidding quiz coming up um, because it's a bank holiday. Uh, so have a nice bank holiday. Lots of changes coming up on the site. Also more holidays. So I'm putting in particularly the weekends there. So I know um, I haven't put a lot of weekends in early because it's all sort of still uh, wavy, shall we say. And we're, we're trying to work out, obviously all of us are trying to occasionally work out how real life's going to be again. But um, hopefully we'll be able to put some in in the first half of next year, some bridge events, some weekends um, for everybody um, at various places. We'll still be at most of the regular places I've been involved with. I am hoping to bring new places in um, to maybe the second half of next year. So, um, so we've got our holidays aboard there with um, Will and Sylvia are doing the Mallorca this year and Mallorca and Croatia next year. I'm doing Mallorca in April, okay? Uh, you know, um, so uh, if you want to join me there, hopefully, you know, who knows, that will be, a, everything will be tickety-boo by then. Let's, let's, let, we can always dream. We can always dream. And uh, that's going through the various things there. 
uh, and the various venues. So do look on the holiday site, uh, lots to look at there and uh, I'll be updating those gradually. We haven't got the new, we, we'll, we'll, we've got one at the Inn on the Pom. I'm not doing that, they haven't given me a, a date I can do yet, but Gwen is going to be doing the one up in Lancashire. Um, I'll be doing a few at Denham hopefully and, and, and there'll be some at, in Lincolnshire again at Grantham in the new year. Um, hopefully though towards the end who knows we might find the chance to do one in Scotland and maybe one in Ireland etc. I'll certainly be looking into that once I feel things are more back to normal shall we say. Okay let's look at the bidding quiz there we go. Um, five clubs from your partner. Five clubs from your partner. Pass and it's your bid. Okay don't forget you can get this answer as the member or as a non-member um, and uh, see how you're going to. So five clubs from your partner pass. The vulnerability is you are non-vulnerable, your opponents are vulnerable. Remember you're east-west and it says north-south games. That means they are vulnerable, you are not, and your partner has opened five clubs. What do you think about that? Okay, well thanks very much for your company. Uh, hopefully you um, you enjoyed that. Have a nice week. Maybe see some of you on Wednesday. Um, and if not, some of you on Friday. Uh, don't forget, uh, you can come and see the site. And if you've never been a member of the site, you can always sign up for a free two weeks. Or as a beginner, a novice, if you, if you teach people and you want them to have a look, remember, any beginner can have a free month to look at it and have a go on the Begin Bridge. Okay, so see how you get on. Okay, all right, hope you enjoyed that and see you soon.